Oh, skulls. And I was thinking, like, hey, you've seen black books. Like, there's the episode where Manny is going to go for a, have a date with a girl. Or no, he's going to go to a party where he knows a girl he likes is there. And he keeps saying, like, oh, I got to bring these plums and I got to bring this snuff. And I got to bring, like, he's got all these little things that he'll forget. <laughs> so you can, like, ask her about him later, like, oh, have you found Or to leave snuff? around the house. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that, that's, that same mechanism of insecurity is why I insist on bringing, like, the entire Polly Moonbeam discography and one million zines and sh bullshit that other people have laid on us over all time and why the table has to be 1,000 things. Like, oh, oh, if you don't like my comic, which I wouldn't expect you to in the first place, <laughs> maybe you'll like this comic somebody else has made that I just am selling. You know, or, oh, you, I know you don't want a comic. Well, take a sticker anyways. I'm sorry. So fuck it. Yeah. Now we're running lean. Yeah. It's just going to be our books. And Skulls. Good to see you, man. You, you, you. How you doing? I'm fine. We're making TV shows today. I mean, what time they open the doors early this morning? 8:30. 8:30. Yeah. What's up, sir? How you doing? You and me, we can realize things in two dimensions. But whatever Kevin has in his brain, he can make it happen. In three. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Thank you. It's like ding dong math. I thought you were gonna give your monologue. Oh, fuck no. Status update slow as ever. This is our third space. The worst so far. It's in descending order as time goes on, quality goes down. Exhausted. Let's go optimize. It wasn't as bad as the, the hotel though. 
this is like, it's a different kind of distillation, but like the hotel is like, that was great. I miss that. That's a beautiful desolation there. You liked it? Yeah, well it looks like one of those like abandoned Saddam Hussein palaces. Is it even dry? He just stamped you. Show me more. You gotta set it. <laughs> Ooh. Right, this is exactly what you thought would happen. You guys are <laughs> brutes. <laughs> Let me see here. Did you slap him so hard that it came off on your hands? That's amazing. <laughs> How much for tables here? 80? 75. 75. Oh, God. I just want to eat those old bananas. I'm a full-time illustrator, so I've been illustrating other people's stories for the past three years. Okay. Um, I did recently a story about monsters in space during the Cold War. So it was like... There were monsters, and the government gave captured monsters an ultimatum to like be exiled in the Arctic or to go to space and have adventures. So it's pretty light. Comics and stories that I write, um, I'm o I'm always trying to like take a new perspective on like an older story. So I guess my first long form comic was uh, about King Pelinor, which is the king. Arthurian legends about a, a wandering king who's cursed to uh, quest for this beast, questing beast, who is a chimera of like a snake head and like a leopard body and like lion haunches, and he's cursed to like wander the world and uh, and like kill him or have the beast kill him, and it kind of runs in their generations of neither one of them kind of kills each other. So I was thinking like what if like this beast was just completely unaware of this like guy following him around but for some reason he always brings horses so he's like oh another horse to eat and he's just like this kind of on a different level there's no like sense of communication between the two. Um, and then uh, three years ago I wrote a story called Hands uh, which is about exploring different levels of monstrosity interacting with each other because there's all sorts of different monsters some of them are more human than others and some of them are more beastly and I wanted to see what would happen if the two interacted so stuff like that how about you what kind of stories do you write I try to just take little, like write little notes about what friends say and then like link those little moments of little quotes into something that seems believable. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm not much of a writer, but I do, I will, I will steal a turn of phrase from a friend at the top of my hand. Mike goes into the kitchen and starts talking to some guy about Gundam Wing. And she gets there. I talk to her for, I talk to her for two and a half hours with intermittent breaks to go in to like get Mike's attention, but he's talking about Gundam Wing the entire time. And and then and then she left, and then he concluded his conversation about Gundam Wing, and he came out and I said, Mike, you fucked it up, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yeah. I'm in the C-section. But they mostly threw out frozen pizzas. Most were bacon cheeseburger stuffed crust. <laughs> I wouldn't touch those ones, but the roommates and I brought the rest home by the dozen. Sometimes in the winter, they'd sit on the porch for a day or two before we got around to shucking them out of their boxes and packing them into the freezer. I'd pry off the little red pepperonis and hide them in the backyard for the dog to sniff out. <laughs> <laughs> I was eating pizza every day. I'd bake them and cut them in half. 
and then I'd cut them in four pieces, and then I cut them in half, and then I would just fold them. <laughs> then I would pile them in fried eggs and hot sauce. <laughs> I ended up living on Northside seven miles from the pizza dumpster. Weeks passed. I felt healthy. <laughs> I wasn't sure why. No one they instruct me. It's just the result of not living off of pizza. <laughs> Sometimes in the old neighborhood, I'll still check the dumpster, but I never find anything. When I find myself in the freezer aisle, I think, why the fuck would someone buy <laughs> Dang, that's just the commercial for that Kia. Yes. Okay, girl, I know. You get a necklace later, boy. What is it? What is it like? Oh, it's great, man. It's big. You got people. You know? Yeah. They have shorter aisles, but they have people, especially on Saturday, man. They, they're like places like Chicago, man. They just they be walking like this, you know, <laughs> because there's so many people. So. Really? Yeah. Do you sell a lot of books there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the bigger, you know, where the big cities are, that's where you go, you know. Yeah. You don't want to be a, a mystery bomber with a signature hat. <laughs> Uh, I'm feeling good, man. We came in with pretty low expectations, and we were talking to a bunch of people, and they lowered our expectations even more, and then we fucking did a lot better than I thought we would on the first day, so it's been slow so far today, but hopefully we can get that momentum rolling again. I'm Marina Harkness, MS Harkness, um, from Minneapolis, Minneapolis creator, creator, creator. <laughs> Peter uh, Fakey, yeah. uh, originally from Wisconsin, but coming in from Minneapolis. Um, I do a lot of auto bio work. Um, just kind of like really humorous, fun, cartoony. It's the book I premiered this weekend, Prize Fighter. Been doing pretty good selling this guy here, where it's all three of these together. Um, just a bunch of kooky stories about me trying to have sex at the airport. Um, strangers, fighting my friends, partying, getting a title belt uh, left at my house. So just me doing my title belt reign um, in my own head and being an imaginary wrestler. So. <laughs> Just fun stuff. My stuff, if I'm not doing wrestling comics, is usually has something to do with comics history, uh, Golden Age or like Silver Age, Bronze Age, stuff like that. Looks good on the outside, looks bad on the inside. Honey, no. <laughs> it's good. This is good. It's, yeah. it's doing a lot of really interesting things, and then you have this, the art in the back. Right, we got the kind of see in there. What was going on with it? So. Nice. We got the money shot right there, man. Got another one over here. You got two money shots on a spread. <laughs> There's a lot of spreading in this comic. Hi, my name is Ben Baskin. Uh, I am with 80 Proof Comics. I've been doing this since probably 1985. Um, and I'm currently working on one storyline. It's taken me about seven years. I'm looking at eight years and probably ten years to finish the story. I got a couple of older characters from a previous series and I put them in a group home um, as staff. I've been working in the mental health field for probably 15 plus years and uh, the staff are definitely bigger problem than anybody else so I'm definitely it's a comedy no soapbox and uh, just trying to get my story it's 10 chapters AE proof comics started probably in the 90s um, 
before that, I was, I don't know what I called it back then. <laughs> I mean, everybody has, like, these professional, it's not even in the, it doesn't look like indie cop. It doesn't look like. Right. Which, that's the stuff this. I love. <laughs> it looks like, I mean, I'm not going to rag on this person, but it looks like a comic book right. that you would buy in a store. Show us the name. <laughs> it, this is very nice, though. I mean, but at the same time, I, right now I wouldn't have the money to do anything. Else. Right. And now it's either a fake DIY look or, right. or I mean, nobody. I don't think anybody's going to Office Max. Anymore. I'm still going to Office Max. Yeah. Yeah. So they're I mean, printing it for you. I just do it myself. I mean, I do it myself. I There's a copy do machine. all my copies there. You know. So I like making the copies. I like mm-hmm. doing all that stuff. And it, it, I like the DIY. And I mean, there's a lot of great artwork here. I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody for right. you know doing how they're doing it. I think when people are looking or here shopping, they're looking for the professional book. Right. They're not. They're, they're even like the people that are like indie or hip or whatever you want to call. Them, they're still looking for. I'm going on a soapbox. I like the soapbox, <laughs> though. My name is Wolfgang Parker. Uh, I am the author and illustrator of Crime Cats. Uh, Crime Cats is a mystery series set in Columbus. It's about an eight-year-old superhero who solves mysteries with the help of his two cat detective partners. In the beginning of each of the Crime Cats books, there's a little map of the area where the stories take place. And there are a handful of illustrations throughout the books. The first book is sort of a haunted house mystery that takes place around Halloween. And then in the second and third books, the characters uh, continue their adventure, and they start learning about Columbus's hidden history. In the second book, The Dusenberry Curse, they learn uh, about the history... Uh, Sorry. Uh, Columbus was once home to the largest amusement park in America. And in the third book, they learn about uh, Columbus's real-life connection to the unearthing of King Tut's tomb. Okay. Which is all real history. Wow. Uh, books are recommended uh, for ages 8 to 12, as young as 5 if it's being read to them. Uh, and they uh, are recommended by Columbus Parent Magazine and just last summer by Columbus Metropolitan Library for summer reading. Wow, terrific. Congratulations on being the most legit person here. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Start shouting. I need my adult. I need my adult. I need my adult. Yeah, I can set up here. Thank you. It's been okay. We've certainly had uh, better shows. We've certainly had better spaces. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you what. It's uh, it's been it's been uh, it's been a bit rough. I don't know. I have Jeff, you feel similarly in a similar manner? Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, it's just been like, I think the cold weather and just like, I don't know, I guess I'll make a million factors. Like maybe they could be located more centrally instead of way out in the suburbs. Maybe it uh, could not be so big. Maybe we could have like show, uh, like in a more centrally located show or like, you know, just others. We were like talking about things of like what we could do to improve the sh- uh, of like conventions, not just this convention, but like shows in general. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, like one was like, you know, what about like pre-orders for like uh, like having like uh, like a convention's website having um, having like people's products being show up there like previews. You know, it was like have the first few pages of something like up there so you can kind of look through it in the days leading up to the show and be like, okay, I kind of want to do this, and then like go a step further and be like okay well maybe I'll just pre-order that and like have like a, a cushion like so it's not such a gamble for artists to like go there and think oh well maybe they'll like my stuff you right. know maybe sometimes shows can be like more frequent like uh, maybe like I'm a kind of a farmer's market sort of thing yeah um, have like more and I would also solve the problem of like having these shows being overburdened with artists because like there's a lot of great people here but you can't spend all in one weekend right it's just tough because you know you as an artist you know, here in America, it's kind of like the Wild West. It's like everybody's, like, gunslinging for themselves, you know. But I think it would be a lot easier and take a lot more pressure off a lot of people if uh, you could have, you just have to worry about making your stuff, and then you can kind of back off a little bit on, on the sale end. I mean, essentially, I, it sounds dumb, and I don't know if this is the way I want to put it, but, like, 
you know, get like comics agents or something, you know? I know that that's a thing, I know that exists, but like, you know, hawking your stuff for uh, 10 hours, 8, 10 hours a day is exhausting. <laughs> And it's, you know, again, I, I, this is, you know, this is the price we pay for, for not um, uh, signing up with Marvel or DC or whatever. You do everything, you keep all the profits. Yeah. And that's fine, but I can only do so much, right. you know? I, the, I would rather have this shit in front of more people's face, uh, maybe not through my own volition, and maybe get a little bit less of the profits, but have it be more consistent. Than just like, oh, I have 70, 50, 60 dollars from this one day, but that one day comes once every year. Right. <laughs> you know, like, it's just, it's not like, this is nothing, a, a lot about, not, not nothing, but a lot about the current uh, kind of con model isn't very viable. I agree. Long term, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure both of you guys know that pretty well. He just doesn't want to stay here for uh, eight Isn't hours. the miracle of these kind of that you sold it to me? I, it is. and Like, like the it, work stands alone, no doubt. The work stands alone as right. unique and exceptional among all these things. Right. But kind of meeting you guys is part of why. Right. And sure. I, I don't 100% sure. agree with that about like, you know, yeah, part of the reason you go to these shows is to meet the person and talk with them about the process or like, you know, see them like, you know, because like the most passionate about person about your work most likely is probably you because mm -hmm. you're the one actually putting all the effort into it. It's, I mean, it's hard to... <laughs> Would you like to buy anything? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, Another you know, it's, I think that's a, like a hard thing to find. Like, what do you do? Like, you find somebody who's willing to come out and passionately sell your stuff. Right but is not uh, personally invested and like how much are you going to like pay them is like that's sort of like a weird balance like right. I don't know anybody yeah, sure. uh, anybody of my friends who I can ask uh, and say can you sell this for me um, and not feel kind of bad about it where is he these are my stickers I print out my tumbler and sticker paper I try to make them glossy This is the comic I made last year for Cake. These purple shoes were really important. I spent a long time on the purple shoes. This is every thought that I had for two hours about changing where I was or what I was doing when I was just writing down my thoughts. This is one that I do as a reading sometimes. Good with slides of um, slides are in this one. I think. No, they're in this one. This one. With these very abstract, like, these shapes. Which was a sort of comic. So then I, people like those abstract shapes, so I was just like, try to write it with the shapes. So I made this one. These are a lot about meditation practice and how life changes when you have a healthy meditation practice and exercise and, and uh, drawing, you know, drawing what you want. What was life like before? It's confusing. Never felt, you know, good. Just like on to the next thing. Whatever. You know, what's the point? Why? You, you feel know, good now though? I feel good now. Do you find drawing relaxing? Yeah, most of the time. I find drawing stuff I want to draw relaxing. If I have to draw a comic and I have to draw a car and have to draw the person the same with their ears the same size and their forehead and their eyes the same apart, I don't love doing that. But I like the outcome of that and I'll do it. You know, but I'm not the kind of guy who's going to do like the six million dollar man comic for IDW and like or the Star Trek comic to like get Captain Picard looking right. Like, I don't care. You know, I don't. I'd rather spend time on the story and like give someone something truthful that happened to me and something honest about the condition of being me in the world. Right. You know? so, Cause like I can make up some bullshit about space. Like so can you? Right. Like, who cares? Who cares? And so we what? have. Yeah. So, like some historical <laughs> thing. 
go on Wikipedia and research it and like mm -hmm. this is what it was like to be uh, colonial, you know, and then right. like the thing, and then like then I got somebody to draw it and now I'm here and like but why? That Wikipedia is like still there, man. Right. You know what else I don't like those hip hop comics. You don't like hip hop comics? That hip hop family tree. I don't like that. <laughs> Just like nobody told you it was a bad idea to draw real black people as Fat Albert characters right. without their permission. I'm gonna leave my phone here if someone tries to buy something at the last second. You wanna help me out? Thanks. That undershot. The low awesome. angle's bad, sir. <laughs> She'll settle down. I thought that it was a great idea. Use your shank to force her to take the other one. You should be threatening people to make more sales. We have. <laughs> We did good. In the last, uh, like, 45 minutes, we made more than in the last 45 hours. What? What are you doing this for? Sorry. Oh, yeah, I don't I don't know what what, what we're talking about. What's Hi, your, your I'm, comics and I'm, who I'm, you are? I'm comics. I'm Lauren. Uh, I make True Life comics. That's that's my, my comics that I do. My name's Lauren McAllister. Hi. 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 Well, my comics are about mostly my own life events because uh, I, I'm obsessed with myself and I don't like writing fiction at all. I actually hate it. It's not any fun for me. It just stresses me out. But telling uh, long personal stories is kind of my whole thing. So I, I'll just make some comics about long personal stories. That's cool. Sarah, what are you doing? Do you feel like narcissists gravitate toward comics uh, more than other groups? I don't know. I feel like narcissists gravitate towards like creative pursuits in general yeah. because we all love ourselves and we want to share uh, our own worldviews with other people because we think that they should think the same things that we do. Yes. And oh, sometimes they oh. actually do, which is like super cool and exciting. It's like really awesome if someone looks at your comic and they're like, oh my god, I think this all the time. Like, that's great. That's such a good feeling. I'm like, yes, validation. <laughs> I'm doing something kind of important to someone somewhere. That's great. It's, it's awesome. I love it. Is that what you, is that what you aim for? Is I don't know. I guess for, like, like, for like people to like see. I don't know. I like I like Nonfiction comics, and I like doing comics about my own my own stories because I think that those are my favorite things to read about. I like getting to know someone in that way mm -hmm. because I feel like I don't know. I was talking about this earlier, but I feel like you can like talk to someone like every day and not get to know them on the same level that you do if like you just read a comic that they made. It's like a completely different thing, a completely like new way of like expressing yourself to someone else, which I think is really cool. Is it that they can share something more clearly or more deeply? Yeah, I think so. I think both of those things. Yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, it's just different. It's a different, a different way, which is nice. Yeah. I definitely feel the same way. I don't know though. We were just talking about is it better we need to, burn to repulse money, someone okay, incredibly hard we need to or to and then we'll burn get kind of like, oh yeah, I relate to this. From a, from a money-making standpoint, it's definitely worse to horrify right, someone yeah. than to have them buy your thing and then casually, like, throw it away without ever reading it. Because at least then I have $5. Right. I feel like I have a lot of residual teen angst where I really get off on, like, the friction of, like... Yeah, you just love the like, creeping people the out. Like, ha-ha! Screw you! I didn't want right. to get money anyway! Right. Like, yeah, I get that. I get that. TrueLifeComics.com. Comics is with an X. Go to the website, read my books, buy my stuff. <laughs> we should burn some hell money.